So what about the other 1% of the UFO phenomena? Has there ever been legitimate sightings? As promised, we're going to cover this 1% in a future episode. But I'll share with you something a wise man will share with me. Before we should start focusing on dealing with problems outside our world, we should first focus on solving the problems within our world. And before you can start solving problems within your world, you first have to solve problems within yourself and within your surrounding environment of family and friends. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we have priorities that we need to focus on first and foremost so we can successfully build our lives and our minds. Now it's no secret that the difference between what the government knows about UFOs and aliens and what is shared or released to the public is extremely enormous. And unfortunately, governments and several organizations on Earth are taking advantage of the UFO phenomenon to achieve worldly agendas. So why do we see particle beams, huge ones, firing at things that are, you, you were saying 200,000 Gs? Yep. I mean, I mean, go over that. Well, because I think it's part of a test for if there are bad guys out there, or maybe they're doing preparations for factions. We may be looking at more than one faction. Remember, these groups tend to fragment. They fractally fragment so that you have wars within wars within wars. You know. The, but why would NASA if they, uh, release that footage? Well, remember, you've got all the good guys in NASA, and then you've got a few who are not good guys. The good guys don't know that there's something to keep secret. They Remember, the lies different at every level. They believe the lies they've been told. So when you set up a structure, an institution, which is supposed to be open and above board and is supposed to present live TV of the shuttle missions, they present live TV. Now, the controllers can't say, oh, well, we, you can broadcast this, but you can't broadcast that. Because the honest guys will then say, sure. well, why can't we broadcast sure. that? So, so uh, pe people always say if this was happening, it would come out, and it is coming out. Well, I mean, I agree with you. When you've got the Catholic Church saying we need to love the aliens, they're our brothers, when you've got every major denomination saying it, uh, when you've got all the movies and you've got, you know, in the 80s, uh, huge uh, programs at the Olympics with aliens landing, you know, fake aliens, and you've got huge things the size of three football fields floating over d Dallas and, 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 and stuff all uh, over the place, uh, something's going on. And then I read government documents about fake extraterrestrial landing. Uh, you know, any of this. Why? I, I mean, you believe it's fake. Remember Operation Northwood. Yes. Okay. Or we can go to the, uh, you know, September 11th. Governments do huge, big things to sway populations at key nodal points in history. They love hoaxes. Yeah, well, they, they, they manufacture history is what it is. We are building. I mean, all my UFO friends, I, 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 I need to shake them because they're so... Frankly, they're extremely naive, Alex. They really believe we're building toward disclosure. I believe we're building toward a mass, carefully manufactured, fake event where ETs, who are really humans, who are really part of this secret clique, who are probably Nazis, you know, who have developed and perfected their technology from World War II, which is why you've got to get, you know, Joseph on. They are going to basically fake out the world. And there's an incredible window on the Nazi black ops program, the compartmentalized, incredible high technology efforts that were being funded by the Nazi war machine, particularly toward the end of the war in a desperate effort to win the war. And they fastened their hopes on several key technologies, some of which appear to be the control of gravity itself which again is a separate piece of data from my work which came at this from well, a hyperdimensional well, physics perspective. I mean, we know there's a lot of suppressed technology. I mean, 20 years after the B-2 bomber was already in service, they declassify it. So we have a lot of cases of that. We know there's a whole shadow government. Many this is technology in physics, Alex, that would make anything you think you know like a candle flame compared to a hydrogen bomb. This is a physics that literally allows you to rearrange time.
But I mean, getting imagine you've got all these compartments in these pyramids, pyramids within pyramids of compartmentalization. That's why that's the New World Order symbol. And regard, I mean, we don't know what they've got because they are so secret. We know they lie so much. We just know it's advanced. Mainline scientists say they're 30 years advanced. So, so, so Richard C. Hoagland, what I'm saying to you is, I'm entertaining what you're saying. I respect you. I think you're a great guy. Uh, uh, my only issue is, like you said, dealing with what we know uh, they could be up to. Uh, the fact, Alex, we have done experiments. We have our own data. We have experiments now from the Soviet Union. 30, 40 years when the when the Iron Curtain came down, you know, when Glasnost finally prevailed, a huge amount of stuff was declassified from the KGB as well. And we now have put this data together. We not only know what the physics is, we know what it can do, we know what it's based on, we know how to make it work. We've seen in our own experiments ample evidence. We've seen experiments across the American landscape and, and even in Europe that vindicate various parts of this. And the latest thing I'm working on, it looks like Von Braun himself was deeply involved in some of this early physics experimentation. But they're keeping all the good stuff for themselves. The reason is that if we got access to the good stuff, if we got access to the technologies, the energy, you know, we wouldn't be worried about $4, $5 a gallon gas or $10 a gallon gas. We would we would live like people are supposed to live. All six billion of us who could live lightly on the earth, Alex, with this technology. And live Literally. longer. And live longer. Absolutely. And better. And, you know, you could live to two, three hundred and have the, have the virility of your 20s and 30s. There's extraordinary medical breakthroughs. There's extraordinary physics breakthroughs, technology breakthroughs, energy. It's all been kept away. Think about it. We're already on a planet hurtling through space. All these wonders around you, and you've been taught it's bizarre to question, and that's because there's so many kooks in the alternative movement who do talk about ridiculous, you know, Hollywood-style green men instead of really looking at the shadow government and all these crazy secret societies that are admittedly running NASA and the shadow government. Now, ladies and gentlemen, during this talk that I'm going to give you, I'm going to explain to you the history of this phenomenon, who the secret government really is, and I will name them by name, beginning group, the study group. I will tell you who they are today. I'm going to tell you what this is all about. I'm going to tell you who's selling drugs to your children. And I'm going to tell you why the United States government is afraid for you to find out what the truth is regarding UFO. Even though she remembered that she'd been part of the team to debrief the astronauts, she couldn't remember a thing that they said. She couldn't remember why she no longer was working with NASA. She couldn't remember. In other words, she, her memory lapses were enormous, and I don't think they were sane, because we now found the same pattern in all the flight crews. Because the awful truth, Alex, is they have been brainwashed. They have been mind controlled. They have had a technology, a very sophisticated technology, which took away the real missions that they experienced. Sorry. 